Meanwhile, the Kwara state government has said it has recorded 10 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the total number of infections in the state to 307. The chief press secretary to the state governor and spokesman of the technical committee on COVID-19, Rafiu Ajakaye, made this known in a statement on Wednesday. And this brings the total of confirmed cases to 307, while 161 patients have been discharged with 12 deaths. Joining us now in the studio is the consultant cardiologist and CND of United Heart Hospital, Dr. Eugene Mwosu. A pleasure to have you with us on the news. Thank you for having me. Yes. What is worrying about the increasing number? In spite of all the measures that are being put in place, we are having conflicting information from the WHO as well. On, uh, the fa on one hand, they say asymptomatic patients cannot transmit the uh, infection. And then on the other hand, they're saying, no, it's likely they're going to transmit it. Well, um, as you know, coronavirus or um, COVID-19 is a new on a virus infection, and we don't really know everything about it. So it's a moving target. So as time goes on, we are discovering more, discounting some ideas and having new ideas. So that should be expected. I think it's good to be very cautious. Um, what are we dealing with? Coronavirus is highly infectious. It does not have, it does not have a very high mortality rate, but it can make people very sick. So at this point in time, we are in community spread. So it is affecting almost every part of the world. And it's spreading. So yes, there is asymptomatic people that don't even know they have the virus. And yes, they can spread it. Let us not relax and say, well, you do not spread. And then you turn out to find out that you are very, very wrong about it. So you're in bigger trouble. Yeah, but the, the, the WHO seem to have done this quite a number of times since the uh, virus came up. Wouldn't it have been better to put out the information without being so emphatic about the fact that at one point you were so sure that, you know, you are not going to get it uh, from asymptomatic people. And then now you're saying you're not so sure. Wouldn't it be better to say, for now, this is what we know? That, that's true. It doesn't mean that WHO is 100% right. And you also have to understand they are learning. For example, initially they said you don't have to wear a mask. And then the evidence comes out that mask is very helpful, especially when you look at the experience in Asian countries like Taiwan and Singapore and South Korea. Then they change their recommendation. So um, let us be very careful. For example, there is now a report, scientists are saying that you can even have airborne transmission. This just happened in the last you know, few days. So it's not conclusive, but who knows? In the, next, we'll four weeks, in the next four weeks, we may have airborne transmission. But I think what is important is that what do we know that works? What do we do to contain the virus? What do we do to actually make ourselves safe? So we better play in the side of caution and just having a cavalier attitude about it and then few months later, we regret it. All right, okay. let's take a look at other patients because okay. uh, there are growing reports that other patients with other um, uh, health uh, conditions are not getting the attention uh, that they ordinarily should because sometimes uh, they get treated like they have COVID-19 when they don't have COVID-19. How can we strike? Yes, we have a pandemic, but it seems that we are neglecting, uh, neglecting other aspects of the healthcare sector. How can we create a balance? Well, the, the truth about it is that there is a lot of fear among even physicians and hospitals about this disease, okay? In fact, I can tell you that there are some specialties like ENT, you know, they are even afraid to see new patients. But, but also, you have to also look at most of these hospitals are not prepared. They don't have PPE. So just having a face mask and a face shield does not actually prevent you from getting the infection. So I think because of the fear factor, and those things are not easily available. Having said that, please, we have to understand that at this point in time, we are having community spread. You don't just get COVID-19 because you come to the hospital and infect. You can get it 
having a public transport. You can get it going to the market to do, so you have to play precautions. So what I'm going to say is this. It is wrong for hospitals to refuse to see somebody with fever because they are afraid of COVID-19, because that fever could be from simple malaria. It could be from typhoid. It could be from urinary tract infection or just common you know, upper respiratory infection. All so, right, so, uh, so we need to balance that, OK? Try to see some of those patients. Do a quick screen to make sure that you, know, um, you can handle the common ailment. All right, Doctor, I'm told we have um, a public health practitioner, Dr. Tui Mebawondu, uh, joining us. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. All right, let's, let's um, uh, bring you in from the aspect of the, again, another conflicting position. The federal government at one point said students should go back to school. I mean, uh, the graduating classes should go back to school. And now we have another report uh, that, um, no, that is not going to happen. From the same Ministry of Education, um, what does this um, um, missed messages uh, say to you? And what would be your advice to the Federal Ministry of Education? Uh, what is very important is that um, we, like um, the doctor, my colleague in the studio said, uh, we, are dealing with a, we are dealing with a very new virus. Uh, SARS-CoV-2 is the virus that causes uh, coronavirus, that causes COVID-19. So um, the evidence kept evolving. In scientific discussion, we have to be careful. Scientific discussion is not WhatsApp discussion. It's not media discussion. In scientific discussion, where we disagree, we're trying to try understand deeper challenges, deeper issues concerning such subjects. So when you see a scientist saying that, okay, wait a minute, it can be airborne, it will not be airborne, face mask can protect, face mask will not protect it. These are communication for scientific community that we have to see and seek more evidence to validate or discard such notion. Now, it, but unfortunately for the social media that everything has come to the, uh, the focus of social media, we see them misinterpreting and misusing those things. Now, what we need to do, let's look at that, this issue of airborne and not being airborne, for instance. Now, um, if we relate it to the school opening, it's important we hear that we're seeing there's a, there, there, a discordant communication between the, our whole uh, uh, President Task Force uh, for COVID-19 and even the whole system, because you see, school is part of the system, church is part of the system, bars and part of the system, and even to public transportation. We, we need to have seen this thing properly and understand how to use this evidence. That's why you keep seeing that today we say we want to open school, tomorrow we're not sure whether we want to open the school, because right, um... we're not even looking at the evidence at that depth. Now, if this, this, is, uh, this virus is transmitted by airborne, it becomes a challenge the kind of prevention we need to put in place. You know, we've always said, when we talk about droplet infection, we said, okay, give a distance of about six feet out between the next person. But uh, if it's airborne, what it means is that a, 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 you know, a, um, a, a confinement, a room inside plane, uh, inside school, inside church, can actually lead to more transmission. So in, in view of the fact that this evidence is not now imagined, you won't advise anybody to quickly open school once you can really figure out what to do with such situation. All right, Dr. Meba Wondu, I, I want to ask you, how do you think, based, uh, you, you must have also heard uh, Dr. Wosu when he talked about the uh, situation with WHO and the asymptomatic today, not infectious, asymptomatic tomorrow, infectious. How do you think we should be accessing information that is being uh, put forward on the issue of the virus going forward? Again, um, for us, I think um, the best thing actually is for government to state or even WHO to clearly state, separate between what is available to the general public and what is available to scientific community. Because scientific community interpretation will be different from that of general public. Now, for the general public, we should also go, I, I don't mind us going to overdrive, to state all things possible. Guys, this thing, we, 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 we're not too sure. It will also be transmitted through airborne. Please stay clear. Please, it could also be by a droplet infection or airborne. Please stay clear. 
do the following, do the following to prevent such transmission. So we need to incorporate preventive measures that will pre that will attack airborne and droplet transmission at the level of the public, whereas we're still working on scientific evidence. Also, at the level of the public, we need to maximize the, the, even the face masks and the shields. Because what we're doing that, we're not overreacting. Honestly, we're not overreacting if we do all these things. We're just further helping to lower, and lower the rate of transmission and flattening the curve so that ultimately we can defeat the virus. Right, now, let's, let's at the level of scientific community, we need to wrap up our evidences. You know, we have to do more work to understand exactly you what need to wrap up in about uh, 20 seconds so we can get a quick thought from the doctor in the studio as well. So, so it's important. But what we have seen is that a lot of pe uh, what I call uh, papers that were not yet peer reviewed, what are called print journals, have been pushed out into the social media and it's been misinterpreted and causing confusion. We have mismanaged the information management in this COVID 19 disease. All right, uh, Doctor, your quick thought on the um, online consultation as one way to help patients who uh, might be hesitant about going uh, to the hospitals. Um, what's your, how effective are uh, online consultations that are springing up all over uh, the world, not just Nigeria? Well, online consultation um, is good, but it has its limitations, okay? You know, for minor ailments, you can advise patients, you know, over the telephone or over, you know, Skype or Zoom, you know. You, you have not done physical exam on them. You have not seen them. You can advise them, try this, do this, get some labs. So it has its own limitation. As a cardiologist, if, if you are breathless or you're having chest pain, what is online going to do? You need to come and see me. Okay, so there so must that you be moderation course, in the use you know, of For simple things, you know, if you have a skin rash and you can take the picture and the doctor can look at the skin and make a diagnosis, but not when you are breathless, not when your heart is jumping out of your chest. Online is not going to help. You need to present. And let me also say this. People are afraid of coming to the hospital and they are presenting late. Just this week, a very close friend or an acquaintance for two weeks was at home, not feeling well, this, this did not go, eventually was actually asked to go to the hospital and got a CT scan. The whole chest is full of pneumonia. Oxygen is very low. He's now fighting for his life because he was afraid of going. If he had gone in earlier, it would have made a difference. So while so, online consultation is yeah, valid, it please, still has its limitations. Yeah. But, but before we go off of the line, it's very important to emphasize what works. All these airborne or not airborne face masks. Listen, America is being ravaged by COVID-19 in spite of advanced healthcare system and infrastructure. Look at what is happening. Because they failed to just comply. You know, people are talking about their freedom. They are not complying and they're in trouble. Look at other places that made a difference. Singapore. So in Nigeria, in spite of all this, let us do the basic that works. Okay. Isolation, face okay. masks, social so distancing, washing your hands. It works. All right. Okay, that's what we need to do.